And now we're moving into a different part of the day, a fireside chat, the first one of the day, and with a very intriguing name, farmers and investors, how to advertise effectively. So what's going to happen right now? We're going to dive into the story on how the fintech company of the year found an opportunity in an unusual market and how they use advertising to grow their business and reach two very distinct audiences. So for everyone who is scouting right now different opportunities and ideas, I think that's a very great fireside chat to listen. So I would like to welcome on stage Darius Versetskas, co-founder and CMO at Heavy Finance. Welcome. And our moderator, Justinas Yojimis, Meta Lead Lithuania at HTT Pool. Enjoy, guys. feeling too down. I hope this uh, chat will um, lift the spirits and should be quite interesting. <laughs> Hello, that is. Hi. Hi, so, all. Happy to be here. So um, first question, let's, let's give people some background. So tell us about heavy finance. What is it? What do you do? And kind of a, how did you start the whole uh, idea? Yeah, so basically we enable you all to help farmers to move to more sustainable ways of agriculture. Uh, you can simply invest in loans. It's pretty much like e-commerce. You go to the website, you choose the loan that you want you to invest in, and you put your 100 or more into agricultural loan, and you're getting profit of average 11.8 at the moment. So yeah, that's the that's drill. There's five countries that we are issuing loans, and anybody from anywhere in the world can invest. Nice. So. You know, you, you're working with two very different audiences. Oh, you know? yeah. Because <laughs> basically you have to bring these two people together. So um, how do you go about it? How, how do you bring and reach both farmers and, and kind of uh, investors? Yeah, so I suppose that farmer side is uh, a little bit more unknown and uh, exciting. So we often imagine farmer as some kind of a very old school person. Honestly, uh, if you want to reach a farmer, you just need Facebook ads because they're sitting in their tractors and they're scrolling Facebook. That's the that's profile. And it's not just the young farmers, it's also people in their 60s. They're just like us. It's just we don't have tractors. We're not that rich. Nice. <laughs> and then how about the investors? A bit easier? Um, yeah, with investors, uh, I suppose, well, with farmers, we are giving the money, so yeah. it's a little bit easier. With investors, we have to take it, so it's more about reputation building, about uh, closer relations. Affiliate marketing works quite well for us. Uh, it's, it's not much of a display advertising as it is actually a little bit uh, digging deeper into explaining them the product and then helping them understand why they should invest in agriculture and they're explaining them that it's it's a very stable sector uh, that does not uh, get the effect of, of general market fluctuations. So it's different, but uh, we're actually with both uh, sides, we're heavily dependent on, on performance marketing. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to ask, like, how much do you go into performance and how much do you go into brand marketing? Is it like all eggs in one basket? Do you deviate between the two? How does it work for you? Yeah, so generally for us, Facebook and Google uh, takes basically almost all the budget. Uh, we do not uh, yet believe much in awareness uh, and all, all, all the soft uh, powers of marketing for purely driving conversions. Uh, if, if we need investors, we're optimizing everything on getting the registration of investors. If we need farmers, we're optimizing on getting the lead of the farmer who wants a loan. Uh, I suppose that's, that's the beauty of the early stage. You, you don't invest that much in, in soft marketing as you invest in conversions and you track everything that you can track because you know that your budget is quite limited and you just have to nail it. So tracking probably was the, it still is the most important part of the marketing. But what, what are the key metrics that you track? Like what's the most important thing for you when you kind of look at the daily, I don't know, daily run rates, what would what, what you, you have like as a kind of a daily metric? Yeah, so the most important is definitely uh, registrations for mm -hmm. investors. 
how much of them registered and converted to later stages because we have all the requirements of uh, know your customer law, uh, AML, and etc. So, how much uh, people get through the tunnel? What's the price of person to get sh through step of the tunnel? And and for farmers, it's basically how how many of them left the inquiry and how many of them are farmers? Because what's surprising when people are getting desperate about uh, their life and and they really need the loan doesn't matter how many tractors will you put on your website and how many tractors will you put on the ad, somebody will still fill the form writing that they need 200 for television set. <laughs> it's just <laughs> life. Right. But you still get a lot of requests for, for tractors. Yeah, yeah, still, still a lot for tractors, but some of them want, I don't know, camera or whatever. Uh, it's just, they, they need it, they think if they can uh, lend money for a tractor, why wouldn't they for a lend for a camera? Of happens. <laughs> of course. I remember you mentioned one campaign that kind of uh, slightly backfired for you and was completely misunderstood by, by the audience. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, we uh, sometimes are trying some ironic messages. Uh, so one of them was uh, loan doesn't cost a cow or, or for Lithuanian audience nakarva <laughs> kainoja uh, and we basically we wrote quite a bit that it's specialized loans for farmers, there's a cow in the visual, and the audience just didn't get it. They, they, they didn't get the saying, and then we got lots of consumer loans. We bought lead for like one euro 30, uh, instantly like 300 leads, all of them have nothing to do with farming. So yeah, that happens in, in Bulgaria. We tried uh, getting a low one is a beans job, which is a popular saying there. And it also brought very strange traffic. So what I understood that both with visuals and with messages on performance part, you have to be very straightforward. Irony and, and interesting sayings though, do not necessarily perform that well. Just go straight to the point. This is what we get give you and you know, this is what you can get and that's it. Yep. And yeah. you know, we always want to be catchy. We always want to say something smart and insightful. But yeah, sometimes the, the message gets lost. And actually, especially now when uh, lots of campaigns are going on, on broad and we're not segmenting that much, being just up to the point is crucial. But how often do you, for example, change the creatives? Um, do you do that routinely or do you have just like one messaging that really sticks for you and you can just have it as an always on campaign? Uh, we tried both. Uh, I remember probably our longest running campaign was we believe in Lithuanian farmers, Portuguese farmers, and that really stick to them. But after some time you, you see that the, the effect wears off and uh, basically if there's no significant success uh, and, and we see that results are slowly getting down, we're changing every couple of weeks uh, ju just to get, uh, get more leads and well, that, that really works. A uh, person sees new visual, new messaging and, and that attracts that person to, to make an action that we need to, him to make. Nice. Um, Talking about you know previous years, uh, we had the whole iOS 14.5 you know change. How was that for you? Did it affect you, or were you prepared? How did it work? Did it give you any restrictions or anything like that? Yeah, I suppose for us uh, there were quite a bit of changes because first of all, as a financial institution, we we got some restrictions on segmenting uh, the iOS and. Honestly, I'd say that it didn't affect us as much. Uh, maybe our user base uh, is also less of iOS users, but I suppose we have just all, all of them. Uh, it's not, we don't, we are not that much focused on iOS uh, ecosystem, but there are some, and I wouldn't say that we are affected uh, very much by that. Uh, I suppose that remarketing becomes a little bit more complicated due to tracking, yeah. uh, but still remarketing is very much relevant for us and it, it still works. So I, I wouldn't say that that was a major change. 
I would probably more hope uh, Google Performance Max to be a bit of a bigger change because it is quite, quite a significant technological improvement mm. that is still ongoing. Got it. So when we're talking then top of the funnel, do you just go then for, for kind of a broader audiences? Does that work or, or how yeah, do you yeah, approach it? Yeah, it's absolutely broad audience. Mm. It's just, and then, then you have to be actually very precise with your offer. And, and you have to tell in your creative part and in the copy, what is your audience and, and describe it pretty much. Because if you're going broad, then it, it heavily depends how yeah. first people will behave. And also, we, we do train the algorithm, so we push back uh, the data about uh, leads we're getting. So we're saying this, this was not a, a potential client for us, but this was a potential client, and this was even better client for us. So by pushing data back to Facebook and Google, uh, you can actually train the algorithm very, very well. Uh, it requires quite a bit of effort uh, from, from marketing technical setup, from IT, but once you're done with it, it's amazing. Did it take you long to get there to kind of a where, where the algorithm is really working for you and then you can kind of a just let it go and then fetch leads? Uh, we had various experiences. For example, in Lithuania, first months were very easy. I made the banner myself, which was pretty awful, and it still performed well. In Latvia, it didn't at all. Uh, in Bulgaria, it was lots of clients that uh, were not uh, potentially our clients. And in Portugal, we're running the very, very same ad with uh, broad targeting for one year and a half now. And we're not touching it. The price is too good to be true, therefore we're not doing anything. Sometimes we're getting a bit too many leads and we cannot handle that, but we're thinking, we're getting it so cheap that, well, if, if we touch it, maybe something will happen because it doesn't happen often in your life that something is too good to be true. So if it happens, you just want to keep it this way. Just just go bring me leads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got it. Um, what would be kind of the biggest, you know, kind of a lessons that you've learned throughout kind of a, all your work as a, kind of a CMO? Any big do's and don'ts when it comes to, to performance marketing? Um, First of all, I suppose, uh, especially a little bit older crowd in marketing, uh, at least from my experience, trust their guts quite a bit. I do not trust it. Uh, always invest in tracking. Understand it extremely well, especially if, if you're running everything on digital. And if I can reach all the European farmers on digital, then it just means that everyone is reachable on, on Facebook and Google. So you just measure it precisely, and if the campaign is not running well, don't have hopes, kill it immediately. Nice. Um, is it difficult for you, you know, because you have to look at both audiences, is it easy or difficult, you know, to, to maintain equal growth? Because you have to have, like, a, a certain ratio, right, of, of farmers and investors coming into the platform. Difficult to maintain? I would imagine um, it is. <laughs> we, we've been running the company for two years and it's still, it's not just difficult, it's nearly impossible. You always have too much or too little of, of something. It just, it's, well, it takes time. I suppose after two more years, I will say that, yeah, actually, we, we're getting pretty stable supply and demand. But first period, Lots of unexpected things can happen, and uh, you see that these mums are very active for farmers, but for example, on the investor side, they have to declare their taxes and have lots of stuff to do, and they're just not investing. So it's, it's a constant thing. You always have to, if, if you solve all the problems on one side, then you have lots of problems on another. And it just keeps going and going and going. Yep. <laughs> nice. Do you have a specific um, strategy for entering new markets? Um, is there a specific way? Do you start, I don't know, maybe with one audience or both audiences? Is there a specific way how you tackle that? Honestly, we, we do things on exploring new markets, simple, stupid. Uh, you hire two or three salespeople because, well, for us, localizing is very important. Mm. And then you just start driving traffic very often with the same visuals as we have in all the countries uh, because, well, just 
it's the same sector we we see that it, it works so very often visuals are pretty much the same sometimes adopting a bit but generally even the same message because what what you need is to learn if all the research that you made makes sense yeah so it doesn't uh, you don't need to learn that uh, the lowest uh, amount for a lead uh, is, let's say, 10 euro. You're very much okay buying it for 30 if needed. Because what you need is to find five clients. Yeah. So basically, you just agree, okay, let's spend 5K and get five clients. Mm. Sounds good. Then you go for optimizing. But first of all, you just need to understand if there's a market or not. Mm. But what's then, you know, what's a good ROAS for you? Do you, do you have like a, a floor that you know is bare minimum for you? Um, What's the highest it's been? Yeah, so last May was the most successful month for marketing. Uh, one euro spent brought eleven more, so that 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 was quite. Yeah, we were pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. But but usually we're trying to if we spend one euro at least two euros should should get back. Mm. So yeah. Basically, it works. Uh, we're not spending too much on testing. Uh, I mean, we're testing a lot, but with pretty small budgets. Mm. Uh, and, and then still, like, 90% of the budget goes where we already understand things. Uh, if nothing very unexpected happens, bringing two euros back sounds good. Mm. <laughs> nice. Um, you mentioned localization, that you need to kind of localize very specifically for the markets. How do you go about that, and you know, especially with, with you know multiple assets across you know digital areas, you know, website, Facebook pages, and so on? Is that, how how do you go uh, go about it? Yeah, there's so much space to get lost, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but actually, uh, I'm not a big fan of of uh, translation offices. So since we have localized teams, uh, I'm just asking people who are not necessarily the best in their language but they definitely know the language that our customer speaks. So I'm asking them to adopt the message. It ne does not necessarily have to be the same, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, then they're uh, doing uh, the messaging in the way they understand according to uh, my general framework. And so far it, it has been pretty well. Though, yeah, sometimes on, on the website you see that conversion doesn't happen, that click-through rate is high, but you see that people do, do not get to filling the form and you start exploring maybe some things that mm. you thought that makes sense uh, in English or in Lithuanian. Does it make sense in Portuguese? And yeah. then you're looking for ways how, how to change it or just try to meet more Portuguese people to ask them what they think about it. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily translate in other countries. Yep, yep. Got it. Uh, we do have one question from the audience. Um, so. Anonymous, hello Anonymous, <laughs> is asking, um, you mentioned that you were able to reach a lot of farmers. There is still a portion that you were not able to reach. Um, what other channel would you use to do so? Yeah, I suppose that there are quite a bit of farmers that we do not reach through Google, Facebook, uh, and generally digital channels. Uh, but the, there is a problem why I don't want to reach them at the moment. Uh, they are a tough crowd. We're an online business where we do not have much of the human interaction or no human interaction at all when issuing the loan to the farmer because they have uh, mobile signatures, we're signing the contracts, we're meeting at the notary office if needed. So if we go to regional press, let's say, we, we would get lots of calls, but then it creates quite a bit of friction points for operations. So as long as we can grow through digital channels to tech savvy uh, farmers, we're just doing that. We love them. You don't know how amazing and innovative some of our farmers are. Nice. Um, TikTok? Uh, not yet. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, I'm maybe. thinking of it. <laughs> From time to time, I'm thinking about testing it. <laughs> I would imagine you know, if farmers are sitting in Facebook, they might as well sit in, in TikTok while they're you know, going across the field. Yeah, it, it perfectly could be. Nice. All right. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, have a good rest of the day.